Kia ora Star Wars fans, welcome to Middle Age Kiwi Man Collecting Star Wars Figures. In this video, we're going to be doing a review of BC-312A, the Mandalorian Imperial Base. But not only that, we're going to be asking the question, is this a turning point in the Vintage Collection line? Let's discuss. Okie dokie, the packaging, let's take a look. So this is the Mandalorian Imperial Base. You can see that it's quite a nice card image. And that looks to be as well that light cruiser hallway set that we've just got. You know, it's that same kind of environment. Anyway, the figure comes with just the blaster pistol and his stolen jetpack. We'll get to both those things a little bit later on. On the back there, you see they've gone with VC-312A. Alright, so I've just brought in another couple of figures. So we got VC-312A, the new one here. This is VC-312, Mandalorian Minds of Mandalore. And then we've got this one, which is VC-292. The Mandalorian N1 Starfighter, the one that came with the N1 Starfighter. I've got them all there because they're very, very similar. And again, this is VC312, this is VC312A. And we'll do some comparisons with the loose figures a little bit later on. And once again, I got two of those and this bubble was absolutely pulverized. So we're going to be opening this one. All right, and there is VC312 out of his packaging, and let's have a look at the accessories. So you get the classic Mandalorian blaster, but once again, you can see straight away that it's just molded plastic. It doesn't have the flat brown paint for the handle. And we get this accessory, the jetpack that he stole off the Imperial Trooper. All right, and to accommodate this new backpack, it's got a different peg hole to previous Mandalorians, it now has the universal peg hole that all of those other Mandalorians come with. That should just pop on there, and it does. Now, if you really wanted to, you could use a different Mandalorian jetpack. This is one of the ones from the Shriekhawk set, and that'll pop in there perfectly. The only backpack that's not going to work is the Mandalorian's ones, because that had that off-center peg. And I believe that was to accommodate the plastic cape that came on earlier versions of the Mandalorian, so they've changed that up. So let's just do the articulation on the VC-312A Mandalorian, and then we'll do a compare with VC-312. So, awesome range of movement in the head, the double barbell, again, works really well with this helmet. Shoulder articulation, that pauldron moves out the way. You can get it going all the way around. Elbows. Very, very good. Way past 45. And you got the hinges on the wrist as well as the swivel, which is cool. We've got this little bit of a crunch here. We have got the newest style barbell hips, the ones that came with, at least I think they are, the ones that came with the Blurg. Got the John Moran swivel joint past 45 for the knee and you got the rocker ankle so the articulation is awesome however let's compare some other bits and pieces all right so straight away you can see you're getting less or fewer accessories this is vc312a the imperial base one he comes with the stolen jetpack the pistol that has no paint work and that's it compared to minds of mandalore mandalorian comes with this Awesome jetpack. It also comes with the dark saber. Well, that's not the best version of that dark saber. This pistol is painted. There's a nice matte brown for the wooden handle, and he also comes with his vibro knife. So yeah, and then if we turn them around and have a look at the back, BC three twelve has this distressing and this wear and tear on his cape, and BC three three twelve A does not. So look. All right, and now we get to the nitty gritty. The real reason why I think that this could potentially be a turning point for the vintage collection. I sincerely hope it's not because we've got some awesome things coming next year, not least of which is the cantina and all the associated figures. So again, I'll just remind you about the cape. Not as much detail on the cape. And there are missing paint applications. So you can see at the top of the bandolier, there's a little belt buckle painted there, but there's not for VC-312A. 
And if you have a look at the the little charges, it's a nice red paint in the middle there, but not on the newer one. And yeah, I, bottom of the knee. So I'm just discovering all of this right now. Bottom of the knee, there's no paint there where there is there. Even this little bandolier down here is painted brown, whereas that one isn't. A few differences in the paint colours of other various bits and pieces. Lower leg again as well, look. No paint apps there whatsoever. So, hmm. And I'm sure there is on the back too. Let's have a look. Yes, you can see right away the silver detail is not painted here. So it's just little things, but I tell you what, those little things add up. And given that they're so close together, the lack of those paint apps, the fewer accessories, it's not a great sign for the vintage collection. So there you have it. We've had so many awesome variants of the Mandalorian over the years. And in fact, some people are saying we've had too many Mandalorians. And I can see their point of view, but I do love the variety. I do love that they keep incrementally upgrading it. But sadly, because of the degradation to the paint apps, well, this guy's going to be relegated. He's going to be piloting my N1 Starfighter, so I'm not too bummed about that. And the Minds of Mandalore version VC312 will now be on display, which I'm pretty happy about. Anyway, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I'm Middle-Aged Kiwi Man collecting Star Wars figures. Let me know in the comments section below, what do you think about this cost-cutting in terms of the paint apps? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Are you prepared to pay more? Uh, Bantheskull.com just recently did an awesome article about that, which was uh, quite thought-provoking. Anyway, I'll see you on another video.